good day and welcome back to the channel everybody man we got a busy day spring is arriving let me show y'all something right here this is something my dad always used to tell me when i was growing up he's like son see this tree right here this is a dogwood tree and when the dogwood tree is blooming that means the bass are biting you need to get out there and get to dangling but i don't know if it's going to be the case this year that they're gonna be spawning right now. We're coming off massive cold fronts, tons of rain, water fluctuating up and down. I think by the, I'm gonna, around March 23rd, if any of you are around this North Texas area, I think March 23rd, that weekend, you better get your rods out and get out there. I think that is going to be the first weekend where we've had about three or four nights that it is uh, close to 50 degrees or above at night, and that is going to trigger these fish to spawn. So we've got the silver bullet. We're gonna take it out this afternoon. I've got some, some little finishing touches I've gotta add on to it. And then I've also already cut the wood for my workbench. Uh, I've been wanting to build a workbench for a long time and put my, my lure boards up onto the wall. So the workbench is kind of the first step in in manufacturing all of this stuff and getting more storage uh, for tackle into the garage. And this weekend is the Bassmaster Classic, y'all. That is like really the kickoff. I think that's after the Classic, everyone gets super charged up. So this is my massive collection of wood. I have a, a wood hoarding problem, I think, but I've got all these pieces uh, cut from the main frame of of the table, which is gonna be going right there. And then I'm gonna have another seven foot workbench. That's a five foot there. And then lure boards going up, cubbies at the top and some other storage. I gotta, that's one of the main things I need in here is storage. Cause I mean, look, look at what's going on here. I mean, we need it bad. of sanding now this table is not going to be that aesthetically pleasing I'm really just using it to get work done but I had to put a little sand to it I want to make sure the edges are conforming together nicely uh, and I've got this pine right here mixed with the cedar so maybe it's a cool look I don't know but I've got the pocket holes some of the pocket holes drills and drilled and now we're ready to just assemble it I am doing this until the wind dies down and I think I'm gonna have to get on the water. Got some exciting stuff to show you guys too. Got got some new new announcements to make today. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. This will probably be a whole nother, you know, part of another vlog that I'm doing. But this time of year, I gotta try to get pieces of work done here and there because fishing is full board. It's not like the, the winter where I can just work on the stuff and I know the fishing is gonna be terrible. It's like, it's always on my brain now. Like, okay, a little project here, there. Then I gotta get out of the water. It's just too good. Stage one of the number one workbench in the LFG garage is now completed. I'm gonna do the tabletop next. The other one that I'm gonna build is gonna be two feet longer. It's gonna have more tackle storage. This is gonna be more like tool storage and stuff like that. But let me know what you think, y'all. This is a little bit of pine. A little bit of pine mixed with cedar. We've got pocket hole screws in there with a the wood glue. It should be fine. It's not extremely heavy. This isn't gonna be like an actual woodworking bench i don't have a level enough garage anyways but that is it that mdf that's down below that's going to go on top then i'm going to put a little uh little trim some sort of accent wood on around the edge make it look real nice and these are going to poke through the top just like my old barnwood table so we'll have a cool look to it but all this time it has been heating up and it is killing me i gotta get out to the lake y'all all right, I'm just gonna go straight to the water. I've got a ton of other stuff I gotta do. Finally, been working all day, y'all. Getting tackle ready, doing edits, and getting ready for the classic. But one thing I did do in the boat, slap some new carpet stickers on there, looking good. Got those on both sides in the back. Got me some other stickers up here. Got Carl's free range, and look at this monster GS right there. Monster Guggen Squad logo up at the front. 
So let's make it a statement. And we've just got exciting stuff, man. I told you guys in an earlier video, I am excited for this year. It's just been a lot of work behind the scenes and finally we're getting to put our hands on some of these things and I'm, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you something here in a second that we've been working on a long time and it's it's gonna be here very, very, very soon. Pretty much like launching at the Classic soon. it is muddier than doo-doo is brown out here we're gonna give it a whirl anyway i'm feeling like getting in there stirring it up with the old chatter bay spinner bay maybe in this dirty water hopefully it's warmed up a little bit reading 57 right now not terrible and i'm mid lake so if i go up some of these creeks it could sniff a 70 or i'm <laughs> sorry I mean, air tip 70. It could sniff a 60 degree, which would be phenomenal. The last time I was out here, it was literally uh, 48. I want to go try a spot a little ways down the lake, see what's going on there, see what the water color's like, and then I'm planning on spending my whole rest of the rest of the day, don't have much time, in the creek that I'm launching in right now. And I'm going to go up it. I'm going to get up in there dirty like. Man, it is white caps out there, but I'm excited. Anytime I'm getting on the lake in the month of March, Mmm, it's exciting times, even if the lake sucks, which this one does. Got to my, my first spot here. I've, I've actually made about 20, 30 casts working my way back through kind of the mid, mid creek to here now where I really wanted to fish in some of this brush and towards the back. And a couple things I've noticed, just made a cast and a bait fish flipped. Then I've got two cormorants back there. Cormorants are a federally protected species of diving duck. I don't know why they're protected. There's bajillions of them on every lake you go to, but that means that they are eating bait fish. And even though this water's really muddy, uh, I'm reading 60 degrees on the unit here. And there might be some bait back here and the bass might be following. So right now I've got a 3 8 ounce chartreuse and white chatterbait. That's basically just a, a bright white and chartreuse little selection for these fish. So I can see it really good. Chatterbait vibrates really well. And there's a, there's a deep little, little channel that cuts through here. It's nine foot. You just never know on days like this, you know, it's a sunny afternoon. The water's muddy. Muddy water is going to warm up faster than cooler water. So they could just come right on in here and being this muddy stuff in the back of a creek in the afternoon. Little bait fish flicking back here. They want to be back here. Bait is just jumping out of the way right here. Little shad jumping out of the water. Oh my God, a bass just ate right there. Oh my God, did y'all see that? A bass just freaking blew up on a shad right there. Oh my gosh. Definitely the, the bait's sitting off in the little creek channel there. Good idea for a square bill right now. All right, I'm gonna go with this little square bill and the next thing I'm gonna do is fish a jig. So now that we've got out here, I found some fish in the very back of a Yoohoo Creek. Just gotta figure out how to catch them. While I'm opening up boxes and switching baits and stuff, guys, you may have heard in my last video, partnering with Bass Mafia. This airplane is extremely loud, kind of ruining my, uh, my announcement here. Hey, Southwest, play off them peanuts. Wabam, right there, y'all. A, a clear tray, uh, water sealed, four latch box uh, that's affordable, and it's made by Bass Mafia for Guggen Squad. Coming soon to a theater near you guys. Uh, these come with the inserts already in there. You know, one of the biggest pains is putting those little uh, plastic inserts in and they're always hard to get it. You know, I'm always breaking them and stuff like that. Finally figured out how to not break them. Uh, but anyways, it's water sealed. So you can put all your, all your favorite baits in there, your good baits that you do not want to rust, get water in and latch them up. One, two, three, 
before store them away that's the i think that's the only one i have right now so a little special one a little special one don't even have anything in it yet it's so new the other thing i was fishing with that while you absolutely backlash my one of my rods my lfg g rod that i use for jigs and Spinner baits, chatter baits, and everything like that. It's totally backlash. But the line that is on here, also coming soon, guys. Y'all may have seen this in a previous video where I was talking about this little uh, blade coffin box and how I use it to store my fluorocarbon lines. But a little over a year now, I've been using different kinds of fluorocarbon and mono and testing. And we've come up with a few different ones that we really like. We're actually gonna have three. You might have even seen my spinning rod that I've got orange braid on. I've been putting it on all those. That was it. That's a, a testing color for another braid as well. So braid, fluorocarbon. It's a good fluorocarbon, guys. And then we also have a mono filament as well. So now, you guys can go get it and try it out, and I know you're gonna like it. So, I'm really excited about those two things, um, launching that at the Bassmaster Classic. We're just super excited about it, and just me especially. I've been in this industry a long time, and just to see all this stuff happening and, and be a part of it, it just feels awesome. So now I wanna just grab a fish and sniff it extra good. Dang it, plane. So many planes here. Oh my God, he's right under it. He's right under it. That is a bass. I saw a dark olive back. There's that fish right there. Look at that fish. That is a fish on a bed in muddy water. Gosh, almost looks like a crappie. I'm just so confused as to, what, as to what's going on. I could, I could pretty much grab this fish if I wanted to. This is crazy. I gotta find out what this is. Okay, this fish is right here. This fish is literally right here. It's coming up. I got him. I got him. It's huge. It's a huge white bass. What in the heck? I just slowly got this guy. I know they're supposed to be spawning in creeks, but he was just sitting there, not moving at all. No lure, just straight netted him. What in the world? That's a male, he looks skinny. He looks like he's been up here. That's crazy. That's one of my weirdest catches of the year, guys. Oh my gosh, I just slowly netted him. Woo, okay, see you, buddy. It's obviously been a stressful spawn for you. Been working them dirty shallows, grinding and winding, all the stuff. Look at that blue herring. Cool. Cool, man. It's a cool bird. Gets angry sometimes, though. Just ran into some fishing freaks back here. Not much luck on their part either. Said a couple little ones. Of course, that's always the generic answer, you know. Hey, a couple little ones. <laughs> Caught about 25 pounds. <laughs> what I have found is what looks like white bass that are running into this creek. Uh, they don't always have to use the main river channel to spawn. You know, they'll actually go up into any creek that has current. Most of the activity I see that's like mid-level now is out in the mid middle of the creek, like not all the way back here. It's a couple degrees colder than the first creek that I found. Oh. oh god, he just freaking knocked slack in the line. Jeez. Oh my gosh, I was not expecting to... Oh my god, you're a giant. Oh guys, if you're only going to get one bite, it might as well be a toad like this. Ah, I'm fighting the wind, I'm fighting everything. Jeez, it's bigger than a five pounder. Oh my God, right in the sunset, so beautiful, so amazing. 
Spot lock is on. Oh, gosh. Come here. Sit down in my chair. This fish has got a lot of power. A lot, a lot of power. This is on that 15 pound mono that I was showing you guys earlier. So I can put a little heat on this fish. Oh boy. Wow, up in the shallows, coming and warming up today. Come here, come here, come here. Ah, uh, nope, nope, no, barely hooked. Still, this fish is running, y'all. It's got mass, power. Come here, give me that jaw. Give me that jaw, y'all. Look at that fish and that golden light. Goodness gracious almighty. God, that's beautiful. I'll tell you the story on that little bait in here in just a sec. But I just gotta sit and admire that fish. Look at this beast, man. Oh, that's at least a six. Maybe six and a half. Awesome, big old female from this lake, y'all. Okay, let's dump her. Okay, sweetheart. God, I love you. I love you so daggum much. You don't even know. Oh, I worked so hard for you. Swam back into that deep muddy water. I know I'm revealing a lot to you guys today, not on the fishing side. Oh, I'm shaking. Like it's just from the whew, adrenaline and I am cold. It's getting cold again, but this crankbait right here is also something else that we've been working on for a while. So uh, <laughs> I'm just excited. I told you guys in previous videos, like I'm just really excited for this year. And just to be able to go out on the water and, and test all this stuff, it's, it's always been a dream of mine to just be a part of stuff like that in the industry. Just so blessed. And that fish was a blessing, golly. Tough tough out here but we're starting to see the signs of big fish starting to move up a couple of more warm days and it is going to be on like donkey call all right guys i, I can't i just got to go in after that it was just so good Ooh, man. oh gosh all right i'm leaving i'm leaving tomorrow for the bassmaster classic and i hope you guys are going to be there sun's going down look at it perfect way to end the day Mondo. It was a good day on the water, y'all. Got me excited to, to just go anywhere now and try to get on those big bass, try to figure out the little cuts, where the river channels are, like where are those big bass moving up, uh, and even some colder water lakes. And I know the spawn is just around the corner. It's half moon right now. Watch out for the next full moon. If you're down in the south, water temperatures around 60 it's gonna be on. And even more exciting, working on more things as we speak. Some of them are on my desk, but can't tell you about them yet. All right, guys, I love you. Thanks for tuning in for all these videos, especially all you long time subscribers. Um, this, is, this has been an incredible year so far, and it's only gonna get better. Y'all better smash that like button for just general excitement for the outdoors, but gosh, I love fishing. I'm a fishing freak and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a single bite. And y'all, I'm just excited for the rest of the year. There's even more stuff going on, more details of things to come, things we're working on while this video is happening right now. I can't tell you about it yet, but I love you guys. I can't wait to see you right here on the next video on the next dangle. Later.